Today, DJI have released some firmware updates. Now, there's been a new firmware released for the digital FPV system, which includes the long-awaited 50 megabits a second mode, and there is a new firmware update for the Mavic 2 Pro and Zoom as well. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is give you guys an overview of both of these firmware updates and try and just give you a little bit of information on them if you haven't updated already. Now, I can't actually show you either of these because I've lent my FPV system to Alex, uh, Ardra Pilot, who is currently doing the MSP firmware, and my Mavic 2 Pro is sitting out the back and I haven't had a chance to actually get that out to update it yet. But don't worry, there are some things I do want to make you aware of before you update, and it is worth checking this out. Now, if you like what you see on the channel, please do hit that subscribe button as well. There is also links to these in the description of the video as well if you'd like to support the channel too. So, let's take a look at what we've got. So today they've released two updates as I said. The first is for the FPV system and it is version 1.00.0600. Now we knew some things on this were coming because they actually discussed it in the last firmware update and the big one is the added 50 megabits a second bitrate mode and it provides better image quality in FCC areas. Now, just to be clear on this, it only works in FCC. You will need to make sure that your unit is in FCC to use this. And if you're not in FCC, you would need to take a look at the FCC hack to be able to get it to work. Further to that, this new 50 megabits mode only works in the non-public channel. So you've got to make sure you're not in that public channel when you're testing this. Otherwise, it doesn't give you the option to actually select it. Now, my understanding of this new mode is that it is a higher quality bit rate mode. The feedback that I've had from some people with this is that basically they have improved the overall video system. The standard low latency mode is more like the high quality mode that you had before and this new 50 megabits a second mode takes that high quality mode to the next level and gives you much better overall quality of video. Something to be aware of with this new 50 megabits mode is that it does use more channel bandwidth and you only actually have three channels available to use when using the 50 megabits mode. Now, it does mean it will have an effect on other people flying with you as well because it is using that increased bandwidth and it could actually walk all over the other FPV transmitters around you. And it's going to be interesting to see how it behaves alongside other DJI systems, but analog ones as well. But do take that into account. If you are flying with other people, the 50 megabits mode probably is one to avoid. Now, as I mentioned earlier, really this new 50 megabits mode takes over the HQ mode and then the low latency mode has been improved as well but don't worry they haven't increased the latency they've just tweaked the quality and it will be interesting to see how it works out with both of these modes overall now I cannot give you any opinions on whether this helps with range, whether it's going to get past that 6.5 kilometers that people have been struggling with, how it's going to compare because it's been too early days yet. What I can tell you is the feedback I have seen on this is that it is a nice improvement and the overall quality is much better with this new mode, but it's going to take a little bit of time before we really know how this is going to affect. Now, as I did say at the start, it only works in FCC and you must be in the non-public channel to be able to use this. Now, further to this 50 megabits a second mode, there is also some other changes on the firmware as well. They've added a frequency display for each channel when in the 25 megabits mode. Now, I haven't seen this yet, but it is interesting to see and it will make life a bit easier when you're trying to use it with other systems. They've optimized the power algorithm and full power will automatically be enabled if the flight controller is disarmed during flight. Now, the idea of this is that if you had a problem and you flick disarm on the aircraft, traditionally with the current system and low power mode, it would actually drop to 25 milliwatts. And that would mean that you might not be able to see where your aircraft's landed through your goggles, because it's always quite handy to be able to actually look through your FPV to find the aircraft. I've done it myself. So what DJI have actually done is introduced a feature here that if you disarm whilst it's in flight, it will keep the ear unit at the full power to help you locate your aircraft just in case you lose it. 
So that's the idea of this one. Um, they've optimized the user experience when there are multiple devices in the area, which we're not sure what that is, but again, it's basically multiple people using it at the same time. And they fixed a couple of rear issues, as DJI like to say. So these are common issues. They have fixed a rear issue where the remote controller was connected to the simulator and it played up. That's one. And the big one is they fixed a rear issue where the ear unit would automatically stop recording during flight. Now, a lot of people have had this problem, and I wouldn't call that rear at all. However, they have allegedly fixed it. Now, there are some notices with this firmware update as well, is that you should restart the ear goggles and ear unit after updating, make sure that everything is on the same version, and all of the usual things like that. Now, this is available to download today, and you can get it for the system. Now, just to be clear, as far as I am aware, this update has no effect on the FCC hack or the power mod. And the information that people are telling me is that those mods remain in place after doing the update. Now, what I don't know is if those guys still had the files on their SD card, which meant that it automatically just did it again. However, what I do know is it still works with the FCC hack and it still works with the power mod, but you should not need to do them again after performing this update anyway. So it is something to be aware of. So this firmware is out there. Please do check it out. Please put in the comments of this video what you think about it. Again, I haven't got my system right now, so I'm not actually able to test this one myself. I'm going to be relying on you guys to tell me what you think about it, especially this new 50 megabits a second mode. I'm really interested if it's going to hit past this 6.5 kilometer barrier that most people hit. Now, just to be clear on that, there is not a physical barrier of 6.5 kilometers on the digital FPV system, but there is a inherent behavior barrier about 6.5 kilometers and it will be interesting to see how this behaves so that's it for the fpv system check the update out and let me know what you think moving now over to the next update and this one is for the dji mavic 2 pro and mavic 2 zoom and it's actually been ages since we've had an update for this one and it's a bit unusual because dji don't usually put updates out on older products like this very often however this is a bit of a double update in the sense of there are actually two different versions of this update one for the world and one for china and i'll explain that a little bit more in a second anyway this new update is version 1.00.067 zero alongside this update there is new go apps as well 4.3.37 and 4.3.36 for android and what they say is follows they have increased the operating time of the remote controller in low environments always a bonus they have updated the auto discharge settings default to two days this is a very welcome change and it should mean that less people get problems with battery swelling especially on the mavic 2 pro and advanced series Fixed occasional gimbal issues where it was unbalanced after self-check. I do know a few people who've had that one, so that's a good one as well. Fixed obstacle avoidance, which was unavailable using the MSDK, which is not really important to most general users. And here is the big one on this. They have increased the maximum transmission distance to 10 kilometers in FCC and six kilometers in CE and all other areas. Now, what they have basically done here is align the output with the Mavic 2A or Mavic A2 I should say and what DJI have been able to do with these is actually improve the OcuSync system they first did it with the M300 they've done it with the Mavic A2 and what they've done is backwards brought that to the Mavic 2 Pro series and the reason for this is these systems are all using OcuSync 2 and they are able to do that. Now whilst this update has been for the Mavic 2 Pro and its remote there is no update for the smart controller yet and as of today that is still using the older firmware and it has not had this update to be able to give it that 10 kilometers. However I don't expect that to be long now and I would expect to see it in the next couple of weeks. Mavic A2 users are still waiting for this update as well for them to be able to have the fly app on the smart controller because DJI have announced that it will have support for it as well so I'm not expecting it to be too long but here and now today that isn't available and I will update you guys when that does come. Now as I said that is the main info on this update however some 
something else which I did spot on this which is interesting is that the European version and the US version is simply like that. However, the Chinese version of the update contains one extra thing. And that is, is that it must be done before the 27th of July or the aircraft will be locked out from being flown. Now, we don't know the reasons for this. We don't know what else has changed. But DJI within the China environment are saying that this update is mandatory. And if you don't update, you will be locked out and prevented from using your aircraft. Now, just to be clear, that is not the case in the US and Europe. Nowhere in here does it actually say they're going to do that. Now, we have seen DJI do this before, and it is usually related to NFCs and things like this. Clearly, there is something being changed in the Chinese version, or especially the aircraft firmware, and they want that on the aircraft. And there's clearly a lock in place that if you don't update, they're going to prevent flight. Thankfully, that isn't the case in Europe or the US, as far as I am aware. However, it is interesting to see that there is something going on there in the Chinese environment compared to the US and Europe and the rest of the world as well. Now, that is pretty much it for this video. There's nothing more I can show you, as I said at the moment, because I don't have my system. As soon as I get my FPV system back, I will be updating it. I'll be getting it back into an aircraft and I'll actually try and fly this. Really, I'm relying on you guys telling me what you think about this firmware. So please, in the comments of this video, give me your opinions on this new firmware for the digital FPV system. Tell me what you think of that 50 megabits mode as well and anything else you find along the way with it too. And tell me what you think of the footage. I will try and link a couple of videos of the footage in the description of this video as well. Now, that is it for this one. If you would like to support the channel, please do hit that subscribe button. There is also a link in the description of this video to the Mavic 2 Pro, as well as the digital FPV system as well. They are affiliate links and I will receive a commission if you use them, but if you want to support the channel, please do check them out. There is also a link to PayPal down there as well if you'd like to donate to the channel too to be able to keep us making videos like this or just buy us a coffee or buy, help us keep buying products to be able to talk about basically. Anyway, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. As I said, please do hit that subscribe button. Don't forget the little bell as well. Thank you for watching and I will release another video again soon.